we've got a coming crisis in the next two to three weeks that's going to impact everyone and everything. Now, what is this coming crisis? We're gonna get into that in a minute because I believe that this coming crisis is going to be the final nail in start, jump-starting the recession. And this is something that has been coming long before current events shaped up the perspective. And this coming crisis, in some ways, was manufactured, and we'll get into that a little later in the video, in some ways, it was set on the path to freak out everything. So what is this coming crisis? We're about to experience a diesel gas shortage. Right now, along the East Coast, diesel storage is at its lowest point in maybe 40, 50 years. And it's getting lower and lower. In the next two to three weeks, we're expecting to have diesel stations run out of diesel. And what this is going to do is push the price of diesel. We may see $10 per gallon for diesel. I'm not kidding. Now, when I say this is going to impact everyone and it's going to impact everything, let's look at our supply chain. How does milk get to the store? How does gas get to the gas station? How do eggs get to the store? Everything is trucked in by a diesel tractor trailer. If it's not a diesel tractor trailer, it's a diesel box truck. Last mile supply. So everything is gonna be impacted. The prices of everything is going to go up because the price of diesel is going to go up. Now, this is what's kind of creepy about this. The, one of the reasons, this is just one of the reasons we're gonna have a diesel supply shortage is we're shipping a ton of diesel to Europe. And Europe is already paying, I believe, eight to $9 per gallon. So the diesel suppliers are willingly starving America because they can make more money by shipping the diesel to Europe. Now, why is why, why do we have this issue? The biggest issue we have is over half of the diesel refineries in the United States have shut down since 2008. So we have a manufacturing issue with diesel. So this shipping of the diesel, and once again, this is a capitalist society. They're gonna go where they can get the most money. That's why I say that we're gonna see $10 per gallon for diesel. And I've been watching a lot of trucking channels and diesel has been hammering truckers this year. The price of diesel has like dramatically reduced the profitability of some shippers of some trucking companies. So when this comes, you're going to see a lot of trucking companies go out of business because these trucking companies are too leveraged. Now the trucking companies that have no debt, they're gonna be able to survive. But the trucking companies like, you know, you got an owner operator, an owner operator owns, he, he's financed a truck, he's financed a trailer, he's got this insurance, and this diesel, price of diesel, may literally put him out of business. So who's going to benefit from this diesel supply shortage? The diesel refineries. They're gonna make more money than they've ever made before. And the trucking companies that are well capitalized and well positioned are going to absorb the market share of all of these collapsing trucking companies. And there will be many, there will be many there's a lot of people who are doing hot shot trucking. They run on diesel. There's a lot of people getting in the box truck industry. They run on diesel. And a lot of these businesses are gonna collapse. So what this is going to do for the people who survive, it's going to push up 
the price of freight, which in turn pushes the price of everything else up. I mean, I feel that when this happens, this is going to be the final nail in the coffin to jumpstart the recession. I said the recession was going to start end of the year, beginning of 2023. I'm rethinking that because first quarter, we had reduced GDP. And a clinical technical de definition of a recession is two months, two quarters, two consecutive quarters of reduced output. And what this is going to do is just shock the system. And it's going to be like everyone, remember when the pandemic started and you couldn't find toilet paper? That was like a shock to the system. People were bewildered. They was like, we're going to see gas hoarding. We're going to see, because once, right now, they're already talking about the shortage of diesel. And at the moment, there's not a lot of hoarding and stuff, but it's going to come to a point where people are going to start hoarding and it's going to trickle down. Like first, you're going to see um, price of trucking and issues going to go up. And then you're going to see an issue with gas at the gas station because how does gas get to the gas station a diesel tanker so once all this starts rolling in the next two to three weeks you're going to see a shock to the system you're going to see a lot of panic you're going to see a lot of people freaking out now i don't know how long this is going to last because it's going to be about money right now we have diesel refineries that have enough diesel supply so this doesn't happen. But since Putin started this war with Ukraine and Europe stopped buying the oil and diesel from Russia, they're buying it from us. So he who is willing to spend the most money is gonna win this war. And once again, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of blood, there's gonna be a lot of carnage. And I, you know, one of the reasons I watch the trucking channels is there are so many people who are getting into trucking and during this diesel supply shortage i would say this will be the best time to get in trucking because you're going to have to get in trucking correctly you can't get in trucking on the wing and a prayer you know you go ahead and finance a used truck you finance a trailer you got this high diesel and then your truck breaks down that can literally put you out of business so essentially what you're going to have to see for people who are going to get in trucking and there will be people who will get in trucking because a lot of trucks are about to come on the market in the next two to three months and the price like right now the price of box trucks is stupid uh, if you bought a box truck like let's say last summer if i bought six box trucks and just sat on them I could have doubled my money. The price of box trucks has been stupid. So what you're gonna have is a bunch of box trucks, you're gonna have a bunch of semis, you're gonna have a bunch of trucks that are gonna flood the market because owner operators are going out of business, the trucks are getting repoed, and this is gonna push the price down. So there's gonna be a lot of people getting into trucking because if you can get into trucking, like. I don't know how long this is going to last. If you remember when Colonial Pipeline had this ransomware attack and the gas got shut off and, you know, gas stations were running out of gas, that lasted almost 18, 22 days. Uh, I feel that this is going to last longer than that. So if you're willing to be able to ride this out for three, three months, maybe six months, because it will solve itself. They will fix this. It's just going to take time, but this will be the time for you to get into the trucking market because the price of equipment is about to plummet and you're going to be able to get a truck, a good truck for way less than you can get one now. Like uh, I've been watching box truck, like people who are trying to box trucks are like literally searching the country to find a box truck and a truck that cost you maybe 25,000 in 2020 it's gonna cost you 50,000 today. And once again, with this crazy economy that we have, you have artificial bubbles and trucking is a bubble that's about to pop. And you know, 
I don't think there's a lot that you can do except once again, don't let your car get on E. Uh, my car went, I was on half a tank the other day and I was like, okay, I just, whenever my vehicle gets to a half a tank, I'm just gonna top it off. And I'm, I'm just going to ride it out because one of the things that, you know, if you live in the city, there's not a lot you can do to protect yourself. If you live in an apartment or a house that's close to a city, you can't do any farming. You can't grow your own food. There, there's so many things you just can't do to protect yourself and to ride this thing out in style. So what I would say going in the future, and let's talk about future planning. I think one of the hottest commodities that's going to be up for sale in the future is raw land, maybe in the country, maybe 30, 40, maybe an hour outside of major cities. That land is dirt cheap right now, and it's going to get very expensive in the future because we have van life where people, like I was watching this one video where they was having this van convention. Van life has exploded. There's a girl on YouTube, Invest With Rose. Invest With Rose is, she's been a YouTuber for four or five years. Invest With Rose is, her name is Rose Tan. Rose Tan is a millionaire. And guess what she did? She got herself a van and now she's traveling around the country, her and her dog in her van. And this woman is a millionaire. So van life is huge. This is one of the industries that if you wanted to get into converting vans into livable habitats, that's gonna be a growth industry because right now we have people, uh, there's another, group of YouTubers, Kate and, uh, I forget his name, Kate and Nara, uh, Nate and Kara. Um, they've literally been traveling the world for the last five years. I think their YouTube channel gets $40,000, $50,000 a month. They have been living in a van for the last year, traveling around the country. I think it's Nate and Kara, um, young couple and so van life is not the respite of people with no money. Van life has become very trendy. Van life has become very popular. So you've got people who have the choice, like Rose Tan, she could live in a million dollar house if she wanted to. You have a uh, cheap RV living, this guy, um, his, I forget his name, he's an older guy, he's like 66, he's got a beard. Uh, this guy chooses to live in the van. He doesn't have to live in the van. His YouTube channel makes probably 10, 15,000 a month. He's upgraded from the van he had, but he chooses to live in the van. So as we go through this global reset, you're gonna have many people that are gonna make the conscious decision to come out of an apartment, to come out of a house, to live in a van because from an economic standpoint, it makes sense. Like Rose Tan, she has no rent. I mean, I want you to think, what would your life be like if you could get rid of your rent or mortgage? The average person will see a 30 to 40% in some cities with rent being as high as it is now, a 60% increase in their spendable income because they no longer have rent. This is a long-term process. This is, this is not gonna be something that's gonna be short-term. Uh, one of the things that we're having right now is we have a very funky economy. We have people who are living in vans by choice. Now we do have a group of people living in vans by force because they don't have any money for an apartment. But some of these vans are 150,000 on uh, Nate and Kara's channel, they were test driving this $700,000 van. So you've got segments in the market. You've got the upper end segment of the market, which people are buying vans and RVs, and they're living very nice while they travel around. Then you got the middle of the market. These are people buying 40, maybe $70,000 vans. These people who could afford to live in the apartment or could afford to live in the house, they're making the calculated decision 
to live in a van to save a lot of money. And then you got the bottom segment where these folks just got a, a piece of crap van and they refurbished it themselves and they did a YouTube thing and they made money from uh, displaying the, their van build on YouTube. But this, this diesel supply shortage is going to be, you're gonna see, you're gonna, it's already in the news, but it hasn't hit a crescendo yet. But once it hits, this is when you're gonna see the issues. Now, who is this gonna impact the most? Low income people. If you make $250,000 and the price of everything goes up eight, nine percent, you're annoyed, but you can weather it, you can handle it. But if you're poor and you don't have a lot of money and stuff starts skyrocketing, it's like, do I pay the electric bill or do I pay gas? Those are the decisions that you're gonna to have to start to make. So it's gonna be really, really bad for a lot of people. And like I said, I'm estimating this is gonna last three to six months because the market will correct itself because we got stuff that has to be moved. We, we got stuff that has to be moved. So what I feel is the shippers are going to pay the money to move this freight because it's better to make less money than to make no money. So I think that's going to be the calculus that they're going to make, and they're just going to pay these higher shipping moves. And this, this isn't going to last forever, but it's going to last more than a few weeks. I estimate three to six months where this is going to be going on. And this is like, if it lasts six months, this is where you're going to see a mass exodus of people leaving trucking because they entered trucking wrong. There's this guy on YouTube called Not Your Average Trucker and he runs a fleet of trucks that he paid cash for. So he's gonna be able to keep doing what he's doing because he doesn't have all of this debt to service. But anyone that's in trucking that has a lot of debt, a lot of bills, maybe an older truck that's financed, a trailer that's financed and the truck breaks down, these people are gonna be pushed out the market. They're gonna be pushed out the market and it's going to be um, devastating for a lot of small town operators. And it's gonna be devastating for certain businesses. Like gas stations, they're gonna make a lot of money because the price of diesel is gonna go up, the price of gas is gonna to continue to go up. So my advice to you is to exit the low income status that if you're in. I don't care if you have to sell crap on eBay, you need to increase your income because like I said, this is going to hit everybody. No one's going to escape this because we all have to go to the grocery store. We all have to buy stuff. This is going to hit Amazon really, really hard. Amazon runs, I don't know, thousands of trucks per day. I don't know. I have no clue. I know it's, I, I can safely say that Amazon is running thousands of trucks a day between their delivery vans, which run on diesel, between the box trucks who do the Amazon Relay. I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon's running 10,000 trucks a day. Amazon is going to be hit hard with this because Amazon has a lot of money, Amazon's gonna be able to weather the storm, and you're going to see a lot of prices of things dramatically increase. And then you're gonna see the price of some things are not gonna change at all. It just depends on how easy this item can be to be shipped. So once again, if you're in the country, you got options. But if you're in the city, you don't really have no options except you got to make more money. You just got to make more money. Because um, I've been looking at a lot of stuff that's happening. And I really feel that this is going to push us deep into the recession. Deep, deep, deep. Because what's going to happen is all of these truckers exit the market trucking is going to take a dip because there's going to be less truckers in the market freight prices are going to go higher but there will be less trucks to move product so our gdp gdp is going to take a hit and because the price of stuff is going up a lot of people are just not going to buy they're going to be unable to buy so this is going to hit us again and if this lasts uh, three months, 
that's the second quarter. If this lasts six months, that's the second and third quarter. So that's gonna be three consecutive quarters of net growth. So we will be firmly in a recession in the middle of 2022. And I don't think this recession is going to be easy, quick, or simple. Uh, right now, it's impacting the housing market. Right now, because interest rates have gone up, people are canceling contracts to buy because they can no longer afford a house. Like say you put a contract on a house the first of the month, and then your mortgage interest rate went up two basis points. You can no longer afford that house. So you're getting a lot of houses, contracts being canceled. A lot of houses are going back on the market. And this is just the beginning. Once these new bills come on the market, I, once again, I don't think the price of housing is gonna crash like it did in 2008, but I do believe it's gonna stabilize and it's gonna dip because the appreciation of houses and rent, it's been stupid. I mean, I would listen to Dave Ramsey and people calling up, my rent went up $800 in a year. Uh, the average person cannot afford that. So right now, we have a situation where the average poor person cannot afford the basic house. And we have a situation where the average person cannot afford a nice apartment. You got to go an hour outside the city to be able to afford rent. So what we're going to have is a correction in the market. Our rents are going to have to come down. Housing prices are going to have to come down and people are, you know, I feel the next two to three years are gonna be funky because in these next two to three years, you're gonna see a lot of um, change. Like right now, I was watching a channel. We have more real estate agents, people going to real estate agent, becoming real estate agents than ever before because it's a super hot market. If you're a real estate agent and you flip, you flip a house, uh, you're making money. So we're gonna see a lot of people exit real estate <laughs> when this happens we're going to see a lot of corrections in the market we're going to see a lot of change in the market <coughs> so one of the things now what can you do i i firmly believe that you need to make more money that's your only option uh, i had a comment well stop making it about money um let me tell it to all the broke people in the room if you think being broke and embracing broke is a way to navigate this recession, this wealth transfer, this great reset, you are stupid. If you don't think that money is important and increasing your income and investing wisely is the thing to do for going forward, you're just stupid. And it's gonna catch up with you. You're gonna be that person who's gonna be 66 years old eating dog food out of a can because you cannot afford food. So go ahead and keep screaming, you stop making it about money. This channel's about money. I'm about money. Stop being a wuss. Stop being a sissy, as we would say back in the day, and get out your feelings and start looking at the math because this great wealth transfer will create millionaires and it will create billionaires. It just depends on what side of the wealth transfer you wanna be on. It's a choice because this is gonna go on for the next 10 years. Next 10 years, this is gonna be on and popping. So you can go ahead and position yourself to get more money, or you can keep whining about, stop making it about money like a wuss and just be broke and have no issue. Because one of the things, you know, because like I said, I'm not gonna do any Kevin Samuel videos, but one of the things <clears throat> that I know for a fact is Kevin Samuels made a lot of money from YouTube. I know this for a fact. And people hate the fact that this dude was successful and made money, that they start creating these false narratives that he didn't have any money. Somebody even put up a fake ass GoFundMe to denigrate this man in death. And I'm just sitting there like, how jealous are these people? How jealous are these people? You know, I'm just sitting there like, Stop being weak-minded and envious and jealous of people doing better than you. 
let that go. Because all it's gonna do is put you in the loser column and it ain't gonna be a good look. This is not gonna be a look, good look. Because during this wealth transfer, you're gonna have average people who are gonna become millionaires because they position themselves right for the wealth transfer because they made the right decisions, they handled their money, they kept their debt low or non-existent, and they're gonna do well. But if you are not focused on money, if you're not focused on your future, um, I don't know what to say to you because you're gonna get caught up and it ain't gonna be pretty. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on this and I'll see you guys in the next one.